I'm here at clinical, just sitting at the computer, prepping for a patient that I'm going to see in a little bit who's coming in to be cleared for a pre-op appointment. He's coming in because he has a procedure on Friday and we need to clear him. Before you go for any procedure where you're going to have anesthesia, you need to be cleared by your primary care physician. And what I learned is that the doctor can deny clearance if it's too much of a liability or if it seems as though the surgery might be harmful to you as a patient, the doctor can say no. Because if in fact you're cleared, you go under and something goes wrong, liability issues, the primary care doctor who cleared you for surgery can also be pulled in to litigate. We don't want that. schedule we have approximately 17 patients half are tele visits okay the morning was off to a little bit of a rough staff start because the staff got here a little bit late so i was doing office duties temporarily like answering the phone it is now 2 30 2 38 to be exact and we're just taking break primary care clinics are super busy i think the doctor had like 23 patients scheduled so it's just like back to back to back nonstop. I'm eating an apple, I have a bottle of water. I came to the cafe to get a cup of coffee. And then when I go back in, we got to see patients on telemedicine. I don't want to eat a full lunch because if I go back, I'm going to fall asleep. Because y'all know the eye is going to kick in. It is now three o'clock and I'm headed back. I'm in. very grateful to the physician for actually taking myself and my other classmates free of charge because I don't know if many of you guys know this, but when you're in nurse practitioner school, you, depending on the program, you have to find your own clinical site. And most providers are now charging because they realize that there's a need for clinical placement. And what they're doing is they're charging nurse practitioner students upwards of $1,500. And the price can go up depending on the specialty and depending on the amount of credit hours that you need, clinical hours that you It gets more expensive, especially when it comes to women's health, clinical and pediatrics. It is 5.30. I have class at six, classes on Zoom. The doctor had me see a patient at five. So I worked the patient up, but then I slipped him a note and said, doctor, I have to get out of here. I was so done with that class last night. Like the content was just so much. We did respiratory, GI, GU. We couldn't even finish getting through GU. Class is supposed to be finished at nine, no, 8.30. We was on Zoom until about close to nine o'clock. I was just done, tired, but I am currently at Honda. I just dropped my car off to get it serviced. And typically I don't use the dealership for servicing because it's too expensive. But my mechanic that I go to, he is too booked and I don't have Car maintenance, oh gosh. I'm now out $186 or $89, $189.94. And then they were telling me something about my transmission fluid and something about the air cabin filter. Everything was like 110, 120, but you don't have to do it right now. I was like, thank God, I'm going to have to pick up an extra shift to be able to pay for all of this. That is why as much as I'm like, I want a Range Rover or I want a Mercedes or a BMW. When I think about the maintenance, the dealership maintenance, I'm like, mm -mm. good morning. It's Thursday. The last time I saw you guys, I was at the car dealership getting my car serviced. After that, I stopped by my house, got my lab coat, went to clinical madness all day until about 5.15. Then I got home and of course I had class from 6 to about 7.30, 7.45. And after that, I just took a shower and went to bed. I am working today. I just got to work. I think I'm working. They put me in med surge on the neuro unit. But I told the staff in person, please tell them, tell them no more than four patients because five patients, I can't, like my brain no longer works like that. So getting ready to go in there. 
<laughs> I work for the next three days. So today, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but I have PTO time accrued. So we'll see. Now, I know you guys noticed I'm wearing lipstick. That is because masks are no longer a requirement in the hallways or at the nurse's station. Only when we are interacting with a patient or we're in a patient's room. Currently sitting in my driveway, it is 9.10 and I've been sitting here for a little while because I'm so tired, I can't get out. Um, I wanted to show you guys the run through of my shift. So this is pretty much my stats for today. I, this is with just being on the floor as a nurse, working in med surge and moving about. See all that activity? I'm almost always never sitting down. The spikes that are low, it's probably when I try to sit and do some documentation. But for the most part, I'm up and down, up and down, all over the place. Look at that. <laughs> over 10,000. Well, over 11,000, I should say. And I walked almost five miles. That's how crazy it can be when you're working on the floor. So you'll have people out there who say things like, nurses are lazy nurses don't do any work it's this person that does all the work or nurses don't do anything i'm like if you guys only knew the amount of miles i clock on a shift and i'm back again tomorrow worst shift of my entire nursing career like i'm not even exaggerating got floated to another med surge unit this time they gave me six patients, six. I have never in my 13 years of being a nurse cared for six patients. Not only did they give me six patients, but it was double rooms. The patients, two patients to a room, bed A and bed B. I'm done talking about it. There's nothing else left for me to say about that situation other than never again i am done i'm scheduled to I'm work done. tomorrow but i called out it's 8 10 p.m i already called out called the staffing office like it's me kendra i'm calling out for tomorrow sick because i'm sick of y'all y'all girl is at the dc zoo after my sh week I needed a break, so I am having a little mini staycation in Washington, D.C. First stop is the zoo. We spent three hours at the zoo. We came to Tyson's Corner because we wanted to go to the mall, which we quickly exited because it was too busy. I don't go to malls unless it's like a Tuesday morning. As soon as the mall opens, run in, get what I need, and I'm out. I've never been the person who just goes to the mall just because, oh, we're going to the mall. So I don't even know what I was Had doing. lunch at Fountain Farmers. The food is always pretty good. You know, not disappointed. And now we're here at the hotel. We checked into the Hilton here at Tyson's Corner. And we're just gonna relax for the rest of the evening, go to the pool in the hotel. Well, I don't know, I have schoolwork to do, so that's what I need to focus I on. I do not regret calling out one bit. After what I went through this week, well deserved. I'm gonna give you guys a room tour. The room is pretty basic, nothing fancy. They were trying to get me to upgrade for, to some, I don't know, something she was saying, something to do with robes and whatnot. For an extra $20, no ma'am, I'm keeping all of my money. No, thank you. So here we are. Turn it around. The tub. This is my uniform, guys. You can always depend on me to be in a white top and possibly jeans if I'm not in scrubs. This is like my uniform. This is my go-to outfit. On here. I'm going to try not to catch her on camera. Well, there she is.
Good morning. I did not get back on yesterday because your bro was tired. I went to bed and I slept really well. Up, got up around 10.30, I wanna say, and got dressed really quickly, and now we're getting ready to head out. So I'll catch up with you all once I get to DC. Yeah. Parking in DC was crazy. We just got a parking spot not too long ago. So now we are walking towards the Washington Monument. I did not know it was going to be this warm outside today. Me and my long sleeves. walking and walking finally made it to the mlk memorial it's over there i have to sit and rest up Whew. i'm gonna sleep really good tonight the staycation is over back to the regular program had to stop off at target because i am out of laundry detergent so i'm here to get laundry detergent you guys know I use Arm & Hammer. That's my brand that I go to. No shopping cart, guys. Just my hands. That is all. Remember I told you guys, Target is an entire setup. And they're not going to catch me. So I came, got what I needed. Now back home to get ready for the week. The worst part about coming back from like a little trip or a little weekend getaway is having to unpack and deal with what's dirty, what's not dirty, and just putting all your toiletries away. That's the most annoying part. I know I'll probably get asked questions about it in the comments. The lipstick that I'm wearing is by YSL, Yves Saint Laurent, and it is the color, Lord. <laughs> Guys, my vision is so bad. By the way, did I tell y'all the, the new glasses that I got recently, they broke? Like the handle broke. I returned them to get them repaired and they're unrepairable. So tomorrow I have to go to the clinic and pick out a new pair of frames. That's why I've been wearing my contacts all this time. But this color, so it's the YSL, it's the slim lipstick, and YSL never gives names. This one is, Lord have mercy, the color is 628802. 628802. So I'm pretty sure if you Google this color, like the YSL, I'll probably end up Googling it anyway and posting it on the screen for you guys. But yeah, this is it. It goes on really nicely. I have a few of these colors. You guys know I love lipstick. I love makeup. Love a good red lipstick. So I just checked my work email and there are going to be some pretty upset people after seeing the email that I just saw. Apparently, infection control at my hospital is cracking down on artificial nails. And I'm talking about acrylic, gel, dip polish, all the things. They're like, you guys are out of control and we're putting a stop to it. The only thing they're allowing is naturally painted nails. Like natural nails, you can wear polish. But once the polish starts chipping, you got to take it off. So I know I'm going to also get an infraction because I paint my own nails and within two days, they're all chipped up. <laughs> a lot of people are going to be pissed off because, you know, the girls like getting their nails done. It's like a treat. Some women, it's part of their daily, not daily, but their weekly or their bi-weekly thing, like getting their nails done. And now if you're working in direct care at the bedside as a nurse, nursing assistant, anything where you, any job function where you interact with patients, no more artificial nails, no more gel, no dip. I don't know how that's going to play I have out. To come outside, but I just wanted to say that there are certain things that don't bother me as a bedside nurse. Like the whole nail situation, I get it. I respect it. Infection control, patient control, professionalism, you know, having long nails, colorful nails, rhinestones does not align with patient care. That's been ever since. It's nothing new. So I get it. Like they're trying to enforce that policy. No problem. What I have a problem with as a bedside nurse is when you try to try to micromanage nurses. 
when you try to come up with things to audit that makes no sense. For example, the other day I was given, I was getting a report from the night shift nurse and the assistant manager was literally at the bedside with us listening to how we gave report. And at first I didn't know what was happening, right? What's happening here? And the assistant manager is like, oh, she's just here to listen to us give report. And I'm like, why? And she's like, well, there's been some things that's being missed in report. Like what? What sentinel event occurred that will cause the administration to say we need to be audited when given report? Things like, you know, making sure the patient has on the proper hand bracelet. We scan our meds. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand once in a while, very rarely little slip ups can happen. But is it a cause for us to be audited? Like, are we not professionals? Are you auditing me when I'm given insulin? Are you auditing me and watching me when I'm given potent drugs that can possibly eliminate someone? I, are you? But to stand there and listen to us exchange report is so humiliating because nurses throughout history have been given handoff. Like we understand the concept of giving handoff. We also know that in handoff, you might not get everything that you need. It's your job as the nurse to be an investigator, comb through the chart. And it's also your job to ask the appropriate questions in a respectful manner, obviously, to get what you need to continue on with the care, as well as engaging with the patient and possibly even asking family members. So for me, I was just really perplexed that they thought listening to us exchange report was conducive and somehow productive. It's ridiculous. It's just be buzzing. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end the vlog here. I have to go twist Courtney's hair for school tomorrow because she wants to wear her hair out all the time. So that's more work for me. I'm going to head in and do that and I'll catch up with you all in another vlog. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for the support.